almost 10 o'clock and we are still in bed. And we still in bed, baby. Yeah. <laughs> He's that real funny. Um, COVID got me. <laughs> I was so smug about never having caught it already. Um, it's really hard to do this, isn't it? So, Brana is sick with COVID. Um, so, it's just going to be me going solo with Evie for the next couple of days, eh? Yeah, it'll be fun. Will you treat me well? And we're just going to be real mean to me. That's not going to be fun. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I've taken the, a couple of days off work so that... Um, I can look after Evie because it's important that Bran is isolated from her. Um, just because we can't really risk her getting getting anything, let alone COVID. Um, I've I'm vaccinated and I've had my two shots, so um, probably why I didn't get it. Um, because Bran has had symptoms now for like two days, and the test only came back positive yesterday, so. Um, she's moved down to one of the spare rooms downstairs, which is good that we can we can kind of separate that much. Um, and yeah, you're right. It is ridiculous, isn't it? <laughs> it's so funny, isn't it? Yeah, it's so funny. <laughs> you're loitering, aren't you? Hi. <laughs> I have to. I'm <laughs> You going to get your test so that yeah. when, you, when you're dressed? I'm going to get my test now. I'm going to come home and put my pajamas straight back on. <laughs> and I'm getting into bed because I'm sick and yeah. I don't feel that bad. <laughs> I'm hoping that this is as bad as I feel. I yeah. feel like headachy, a little bit short of breath. I feel like I have period cramps around the front and my back. Okay. Are we having fun? Are we going to have a fun day? Daddy daughter day. Yeah, we're fun. Down. A fun few days. Yeah, I'm gonna pick your outfits and everything. Yeah. I'm gonna take pictures and send them to you. <laughs> and videos. Am I? Yeah. Is that what I'm gonna do? Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and make her pretty and brush her hair and, and so you gotta put moisturizer on her face and give her food and help her poop and let her poop your eyes off. Okay, bye! Bye! <laughs> I'm also kinda glad that it's like horrible outside because that way I don't have to feel bad about staying inside all day. Hey baby. Hey. hey yeah. Although it is sometimes easier when when you um when you can just put put your baby in your in the buggy and put them to sleep that way. But hey, it's nice to end the day inside isn't it? Yeah. Evie had spent the bulk of the morning crying, um, which is not fun. Um, so <clears throat> I she finally fell asleep and I managed to set up her feed, uh, which I'm late for because this uh, being a man thing is pretty hard. Um, I am currently making her the prune syrup juice or whatever it is that Brana makes to help her poo. Um, while also making myself and Brana lunch as well. And uh, she's off getting her COVID test, uh, her PCR test, which is positive, so she definitely has COVID. Um, so I'll just leave this in the spare room for her. I'm making scrambled duck eggs, which uh, we get from our neighbor. Toast and vegan sausages, because uh, we're the world's shittest vegans. Have you had fun with dad? Go! <laughs> I think you have had fun. You've had a fun evening, haven't you? Yeah. We have had a fun evening. Hi. Hi. Do you want my face? Do you want my face? Day two is going a lot better, isn't it, baby? Yeah, it's going so much better. I think having the prunes last night really helped you. And mom has been, has been coming and helping us, hasn't she? She comes and smokes you because I'm really bad at doing it, so she comes and gets all your snuff out, doesn't she? Yeah. Yeah, she does. Hey, you're so much happier today. You were very upset yesterday for most of the day. 
We're gonna go for a walk now, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. Dad's terrible, terrible sticker job because I'm just not as good as this as your mom, am I not? No, I'm not as good as your mom. Fell straight asleep as well as soon as, as soon as we got outside. Oh, hello. Dad dog and waking you up. Are you trying? Are you trying to wake up, are you? No, you're straight out again. <laughs> yeah, day two is a lot easier than yesterday. Um, Evie's doing a lot better today. She's barely had any cries, whereas yesterday she pretty much spent the whole day being upset um, and, and really letting me know that she was upset. Big in combination, it was not having Brana around. Um, she does just want her mom a lot of the time. As well as um, she she has really bad constipation at the moment, which is a shame because and which is frustrating because she she only has that because she's on diuretic for her heart. So like a lot of things do to kind of always feed back to to her heart being a root cause of a lot of the, a lot of the things going on with her. Um, but it's just really sad. It's it's not nice to see your child struggling with anything, and she it makes her really sad. Um, Big coat might have actually been a mistake because I'm feeling pretty warm. I have a bit of a tickle in my throat as well. Um, I have my booster vaccine, so hopefully it's not actually COVID as well. Uh, I've been doing tests twice a day and they've all been coming back negative. Um, I think it's either a sympathy one for Brana or it is um, probably just something else. Or it is. Um, I actually had a lot. Of, <laughs> I, had a, I had a bit to drink last night as well, so it could actually just be a general hangover. Um, so, so yeah. But uh, what the first day kind of showed me was how hard those days are. Like I can see it sometimes when when Brian is struggling and I'm working, um, and I do come out and help where I can. But a lot of the time she's she's left on her own to deal with it during the day, and I am definitely try to to always be supportive of where I can but I, I suppose that this is what's really highlighted to me just how difficult those days can be and how stressful and frustrating they can be as well so yeah um day two and long it's gonna be a long week ahead day three of isolation covid finally got me oh um i was so smug as well about never having caught it but it finally caught up with me. So, you know, I was trying to get out and kind of do more, um, like get out with Evie and, you know, do little hikes and things with her and Ross. Um, and then I suppose, I suppose it's the summer and like COVID is kind of, that's Ross making coffee. <laughs> um, it's just kind of like, I suppose everyone is feeling a little bit, a bit more lax about it. Um, so yeah, I went to Dublin on Monday with my friend and Evie to go shopping because my friend is getting married this month. Um, so we just went down to get a few bits and pieces, proper bras, you know. <laughs> so yeah, we went down and then Tuesday I went to the osteopath with Evie, grand, like wear a mask and everything. And then went to get my hair cut, wear a mask. And then I went to a show where the lead or the the person that the show is about is a 40 he's 40 year old guy with down syndrome so it was really good to go to like it would have been really nice if me and ross both went but obviously someone has to look after evie um so he stayed at home and i went with my mum and my grand and i suppose we were just kind of a bit no one else was wearing masks and that's so bad and i actually feel like such a fool because of evie I should just wear a mask anyway, it shouldn't matter. But anyway, we didn't wear masks and that's where I think we got it because mum is also positive now. Somehow my gran isn't, which is great because she's in her 70s, so it's good that she doesn't have it. But mum was pretty sick already. I think she's over the worst of it now. And yeah, uh, oh, and then Wednesday I went to get my tattoos. Um, there wasn't very many people in the studio. And it was just me and the tattoo artist anyway after that and then we met ross's sister and niece afterwards for lunch so yeah i can see how easily it does spread even though none of those people that i was in contact with apart from mom has it either so that's good and today is day three and ross has been doing antigens every morning and they have all been negative so that's good and i did one on ev on day one 
like day zero is the first day of symptoms and then it starts after that and she, hers was negative but I don't think I'll do another one on her because it's not very nice and if she gets symptoms I'll just presume that she has it but she hasn't yet so and actually she has a, she's needed a lot less suctioning over the last few days than she would normally so I don't know maybe that's I have no idea how it all works <laughs> Um, so yeah, I have been isolating down in our spare room. I have a bathroom opposite and I have had to go up and look after Evie for like an hour or two at a time uh, yesterday so Ross could make dinner and because she's at the age now where she needs constant entertainment unless she's asleep whereas like a few months ago she would have just slept a lot more. Even a few weeks ago she would have slept a lot more so you could kind of get more things done but she's really a two person job now. <laughs> So Ross has been doing really well. <laughs> so yeah, I've been going up and uh, in the morning she needs a good kind of, not deep suctioning, but like a good suctioning just because she's been on the mask for 12 hours overnight. So it's good to like give her the nasal spray and then give her a good clear out and then she seems to be okay for the rest of the day. Um, and then she's off the oxygen for a little while in the morning so it's nice to see her little face. And yeah, and then the day before Ross went to the pharmacy to get her some suppositories, which we didn't end up using actually. We just increased the amount of prune puree she's been getting and it seems to have worked because she was really constipated. Day one was really hard for Ross because he was just getting used to like looking after Evie for the whole entire day and she was getting used to him being with her for the whole day and not seeing me. Um, and then she was really constipated too, so that didn't help. Um, but yesterday um, was a lot better, so that's good. And yeah, whenever I go up, I just wear the the duck mask. It has a really good seal, like it has a plastic flap on the inside at both sides, so it like really sticks to your face. Um, and when you breathe in and out, it breathes in and out with you, so you know that the seal is really good. And just keep my hands really clean. I was gonna wear gloves and I wore gloves one morning um, but like you're actually better just keeping your hands really really clean rather than wearing gloves because it does give you a false sense of security so yeah that's really it um, I'm really glad that I've been sleeping I think I really needed this rest um, I read a post the other day about caregivers burnout and I was like tick 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 um, I'll actually find it because a lot of it definitely I felt related to me um, so yeah caregivers burnout so lack of energy overwhelming fatigue and like the way I describe those like I it's all it's like a mental um, fatigue and a mental lack of energy like I have the energy to go out and do a hike and you know do things outside and go and meet friends and things like that and but it's just when I'm at home I feel like I just can't do anything um, and I can't I feel like I can't think and I can't be creative so that's the way I would kind of view that sleep problems not so much I sleep like a log most of the time like I remember having insomnia a little bit during my pregnancy and it drove me crazy because I'm I, obviously it drives everyone crazy but I'm just really not used to it I'm used to sleeping really well um, it says too much or too little sleep here but I don't think I had a problem with sleep Changing in eating habits, weight loss or weight gain, again, I don't think so. Um, with the pregnancy and the miscarriage, my body definitely changed um, a lot through that because I got to 13 weeks pregnant, so like, your body does change. I know it's not like noticeable kind of on, on your physical body, but it definitely, it definitely did change. A feeling of hopelessness, and I know that sounds really hopeless <laughs> but you do feel that and I I don't even know if it's like every parent probably feels that at some point like I know Ross felt it the other day he was just like drained like and that feeling of hopelessness is like you're not good enough you're not doing everything right um like you can't see the light at the end of the tunnel or whatever um and I suppose with Evie's condition on top of everything that feeling of hopelessness kind of amounts more, I guess. Um, withdrawn from or losing interest in the activities you once enjoyed, definitely. Like, 
I can't think about doing yoga or any of the creative things I used to do, running, like none of that I have any interest in and even if I get the time to do it, like say if Ross says he'll take Evie, I don't want to. So I think that's definitely something. The only thing I have been doing is the hikes with Evie and the walks, which are really, really beneficial to both of us. Neglecting your own physical and emotional needs, definitely on this one. Uh, I do kind of push, like I was saying about like the running and the yoga and the meditation and things like, there's, there are things that I used to enjoy doing for myself and I would feel the benefit from them. And I just can't even think about how to get back into that now. And like, I feel like I don't even want to. And emotional needs, probably. I mean, Evie's the most important thing to me and how she feels affects me and how I feel affects her. But there's definitely a neglect, I would say, of emotional needs. I was talking about seeing like a therapist or a counsellor to a few people lately and I was saying that I don't really feel I want to be ready because I have seen them in the past and I want to make sure that I'm ready to do that um, if that makes sense I don't want to get either pushed into it by anyone else not that anyone is pushing me into it but you, you know I don't want to push myself into it and end up like resenting the fact that I have to go or resenting the therapist or not getting on with them or you know and I feel like I'm not ready to start delving into everything that's happened in the last year and a half um, so I do think my time is coming for that I just don't think I'm quite there yet but I feel like possibly after this isolation that maybe I'll be able to like clear my thoughts and think about going to one um, feel like caregiving is controlling your life yeah I do feel that even though I don't feel resent towards it I mean it does control my life because it is my whole life um, and I don't feel like that's necessarily a bad thing but I do think it's a bad thing if I can't separate time for myself as well um, becoming unusually impatient irritable or argumentative with the person you're caring for and or with others now I never feel that towards Evie but I have definitely been irritable and impatient with Ross and that's something that's really I've been really aware of it but I haven't been able to do anything to stop it so it, it, I feel kind of like hopeless in that as well because I know when I'm doing it and I know afterwards I feel bad about it but I can't help doing it so maybe I don't know it's pretty shit. Uh, anxiety, about, anxiety about the future, I mean, that's a given. That is the most obvious one there. And I think that would be there regardless of whether I had burnout from caregiving or anything else, you know. Anxiety about our future, Evie's future, uh, it's scary. I read a statistic the other day um, about couples or marriages um, who have a child that dies in their family and apparently 2% of those relationships like last uh, or they don't break up after that child dies and I suppose you have no idea what it would be like unless it happens and like we don't have any idea either um, and I suppose the anxiety for the future of us even though like I do feel like we could get through anything, but I guess you just have to consider how different you both might be after that happened. If it happened, we don't even know. So anxiety for the future, definitely. Depression or mood swings? I don't think I've had any mood swings. Um, depression is a tricky one because like, depression to me might look very different like to depression for you or anyone else so I don't think I have been depressed I don't think I am depressed because I don't I like I just don't feel like I'm there if that makes sense I have felt very flat lately like I described it to Ross that I kind of felt like I couldn't feel any joy um, but I don't think that's depression I feel like it's more related to burnout if that makes sense um, difficulty coping with everyday things like I know housework for everyone is or can be like 
the worst thing ever. <laughs> but I did used to enjoy cleaning and like making the place look nice and everything. And I want, like I feel like I'm kind of struggling with that a lot. Like recently I was like, oh, we just need to get a cleaner so that at least I don't even have to think about that kind of thing. So difficulty coping with everyday normal life things, which would include cleaning or, you know, thinking about going and doing a food shop really pff, wrecks me, <laughs> do you know? Headaches, stomach aches and other physical problems. Um, I do get a lot of headaches. I always have done though. <laughs> oh, it's 11-11. So the last one then is lowered resistance to illness. <laughs> um, that one speaks for itself, I think. And I do, I was chatting to a friend the other day and I feel like, not the universe or whatever, I don't know. <laughs> Someone is trying to tell me to take a break and whether that's getting COVID and having to isolate or, you know, whatever. I'm kind of taking it as a sign <laughs> that I need to take a step back and just rest. Um, I still don't have my like creative flair back and I do miss that a lot, but I don't know. I'll just have to be patient, I think, with that one. Um, maybe, like I said at the end of this, talking to a counsellor or a therapist would be really helpful at this point. That's all I have to say um, about that. I just thought it was really interesting about how many of those things applied to me. And like I said, I don't think it's like necessarily a caregiver, like it could be just a parent, you know, with no medical needs going on with their child. Um, or a caregiver looking after an older person or, you know, just anybody really. Um, I don't even know if it has to be necessarily to do with caregiver. It's just burnout, like life burnout in general. So I think it's really important to like recognize these, you know, signs and to try and even just recognizing them, like not even trying to work on them, just realizing that these things are happening. And yeah, like I said, not even working on them. If you, if you just realize that they're there and you're experiencing them, then I think it makes you more aware of how to, prevent them um, or at least help yourself a little bit um, if that makes any sense <laughs> so yeah that's my piece of that we are at day three entry yeah get into a good bit of a rhythm now um, getting used to it I think we could we could do this long term baby couldn't we yeah yeah we could <laughs> um, yeah day three it is a lot easier now. Um, hello. Hi. <laughs> You're gonna get out of here. Get away from me. Yeah, it's a lot easier now that we're in a rhythm now, baby, aren't we? We found a rhythm that works for us. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Kick, kick, kick. <laughs> I got wow, 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 wow. Although. I don't know how the additional tasks get done of like sterilizing the bottles and cleaning your clothes and all those things. I'm literally just getting by on the bare minimum of feeding you and like just yeah like I said the bare minimum um so I don't know I don't know what kind of wizardry or magic is done to get the other stuff done but it just seems to happen doesn't it yeah it's weird isn't it yeah it's like you have a house fairy or something I know yeah a little, out of <laughs> a little covid fairy <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm drying my hands with the hand sanitizer <laughs> it's Sadie's birthday today it is Sadie's birthday today <laughs> <laughs> slap, slap, slap. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> very, very important decision to be made. Day five, baby. Day five and we're doing good, aren't we? You're having such a good morning. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely got into a good rhythm of this. Got her oxygen on. Um, yeah, pretty much that's all I've done this morning because uh, Brandon did the morning feed and I'm, I'm kind of just awake, so. Um, yeah, but 
it's definitely, definitely going well, isn't it, baby? I'm still wearing a mask because I went for a PCR yesterday um, and just to be sure that I, I don't have anything. Um, but I am just still wearing a mask when looking after just in case. Um, I definitely have some kind of sickness. Just don't know what it is yet. Um, hopefully it's not the COVID day. Eh? Yeah, yeah. They're so happy. <laughs> so it is day five of isolation, which is great because when I first went into isolation, I thought that the week was going to drag. So we're getting there. Um, still very much the same, like stuffy nose, uh, shortness of breath, which I've had the whole time, and like an occasional cough, a little bit of phlegm, but really nothing serious so that's good. Uh, Ross is feeling a bit better as well, he was feeling kind of a little bit coldy. Um, he went for a PCR yesterday just to be sure and he's been wearing a mask for the last two days, yesterday and the day before, just to be safe. Um, so yeah, Evie still seems absolutely fine. She still has the same amount of snots as she would normally and her breathing is usually a bit laboured anyway so like there's no change in that which is great. I really hope she avoids it and yeah yesterday I kind of looked after her for the majority of the day um, that beeping was just her oxygen <laughs> machine going on um, because Ross went out and got his PCR and he did a food shop as well because it was much needed um, so yeah we I don't know it's just all the days kind of blur into one another um, what else Oh yeah, I went for a walk yesterday, even though, you know, we live very rural, so it was highly unlikely I would meet anyone on our little country roads. Um, two cars passed, I think that was it. And I just brought Evie and I just wore like, not the duck mask, but like just one of the, the regular masks. And it was really nice just to get some fresh air uh, with the dogs and to bring Evie out. She loves having a nap on the walk. So uh, I think it's important that we get out as well. And what else? That's it really. I don't have much more information or anything interesting <laughs> to say. <laughs>